So the purpose of this video is to go over the design and sort of how it evolved, mostly because if, if I saw someone else build this, I would think there's no way that's going to work. And so I just want to sort of clarify how it does work. Um, basically the goal here was to make a CNC machine which the router slid on the surface you're cutting rather than being sort of hung over the surface with a gantry. And the reason for that is I wanted to do a low cost 4x8 machine. Uh, you can only get so big with aluminum before you start getting a lot of slop and a steel gantry machine is just too expensive to build, to ship, everything. So I had no idea if this was possible. Uh, first thing I did was I tied ropes to the four sort of coordinates of my cardinal coordinates of my router and sort of etch a sketch dragged it around and that worked well enough uh, that I felt like it was worth pursuing. So the next thing I did was replace the ropes with uh, steel cables. They have a little bit less stretch but still a lot of stretch in them and that works quite well but you couldn't manipulate it accurately because you know you could just move it by hand. Also, I was under the impression that you had to have a ton of tension in the system for it to be, be accurate. So all those cables were tensioned with these guys as counterweights, which is just a big stack of bricks. Um, next thing I did, I still had four, four cables that came off the quarters that you know, held it down really hard. And the next thing I did was replace the top two cables with chains. And what I did that with was this number 40 roller chain which in retrospect is much too heavy duty, but I think it sort of gives you a sense of how how heavy duty I thought this thing had to be. Uh, I mean this is clearly overkill, but and the idea was that was driven by these sprockets here, which ran in these bushings, and that worked well. Um, I could just throw some vice grips on the back of the shaft and move it along and see that it would cut. The plan for driving these, which never actually got built, was this big CNC piece of aluminum. Um, this is basically an 8 to 1 belt reduction ratio that went on the back of that shaft and would be driven by this sort of low KV brushless motor. Um, after I built that, I started to realize that I was, I was going much, much too heavy duty. I could, I could tone it back quite a bit more. Uh, the force involved in, in cutting if you have a decent router and a decent bit, is almost zero. It's basically just dragging this thing back and forth. Um, you almost can't tell if the bit is in the wood or not. So I switched to number 25 roller chain, and I went to to these motors here. This is basically a 201 gearbox, a DC motor, and a little sprocket on the end. And this guy actually has plenty of power even to lift those, those big counterweights. Um, and this worked quite well. I had a, uh, an 8mm magnet that press fit into the end of the sprocket. The encoder would mount over it like that. And then there was a piece of Ethernet that connected it back to the controller. And that worked quite well. Um, I still had these, the big counterweights and the, the second set of tension cables. And I was sort of realizing that those second set of tension cables weren't necessary. And moreover, the friction in the many pulleys that went through that sort of counterweight system could actually create backlash. Basically, as the machine was moving, it would sort of end up tilted in whichever direction it had been moving, not based on friction between this guy and the surface it was working on, but in the whole rest of the system. So I ended up replacing it with these, these bricks. And you'd think you'd want this thing to be super rigid, but what you actually want is for it to be very, very free. free. Um, you want there to be as little friction as possible, because your backlash comes from friction, not from the force of the bit. So I ended up getting rid of that second counterweight system and replacing it with these bricks. And then the counterweights on the other side of these chains I ended up removing and just compensating for the, the difference in force on the motor going one direction and the other direction in software, because software is free. That's sort of it. Um, for the electronics, in the back there's one of these guys. It's basically an H-bridge, um, some diodes and two plugs. It's, it sits on a uh, Arduino Mega. Um, and it just, all you have to do is plug your two motors into here. Oh, the motors! This guy was a lot of fun, but it ended up being sort of too expensive and complicated. 
So rather than make you put this whole thing together, basically we just have custom motors now that have an encoder on this shaft. So you're getting sort of a 200 to 1 reduction. So you can use a pretty, pretty low resolution encoder here that when you multiply that by 200 to get out here, you get great resolution. If you were going both directions, um, backlash in the gearbox could be a problem. But because it, the whole system is always tensioned this way, all of the backlash is taken up always in this direction. So you get very, very precise control over this output shaft based on an encoder here. And you sort of end up with this, this sort of hanging plotter design that really just looks like I was like, oh, I'll make a heavy duty hanging plotter. That wasn't how things evolved. But uh, it ends up working great. I mean, you can, you can cut things out of plywood, no problem. And if you have any awesome new ideas for how to make it even better, uh, the whole thing's open source. So, you know, take it and run with it. Let's make, uh, let's make some cool stuff.